Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Today we are going to be talking all about amethyst, amethyst crystals, amethyst, these, you know, amethyst buds, clusters, uh, all sorts of stuff. I'm also going to be showing you an automatic way to harvest these amethyst crystals, and this will work on Java and Bedrock Edition. So we're going to cover really everything there is to know about these. And uh, first, starting off, if you're in a new world and you need to just find one, here are some techniques on how to find one of these amethyst geodes. Now, they are underground, and switching to survival mode is very, very easy to find them and to kind of see them. Sorry, survival, I meant um, spectator mode. You can see them. Well, it okay, looks like I'm not very lucky right here. Here's, here's one over there. So uh, they're underground and every once in a while they will uh, spawn in there and you may get lucky and find one just by mining. Just by doing your normal mining you may run into an amethyst geode. But it's very, very possible that you do a lot of mining and you search everywhere and you just can't find one. So here is my technique for those of you who are really having a difficult time. This is going to be the easiest option for you. I'll have another option in just a moment. Um, but that is to head to an ocean and search at the bottom of the ocean. A lot of the geodes will pop through the floor and you'll be able to tell that they are geodes because the tops is just it's just so different. The calcite and the uh, the polished uh, what is it brimstone is super duper easy to see. There is an example right here, perfect, uh, that you can see that that that's very different than the surrounding ocean. And that didn't take me too long to find. And there we go. This is a brand new one. You can see that none of the, the crystals, I mean, there was two crystals, but a lot of the crystals haven't generated yet. So that is a brand new geode that I just found. Here's another example. This one's very, this one's like even <laughs> the broken part is pointing out towards the sea. There's just another one. And this is the original one that I found. So that's one way to find them. Um, I mean, other than, you know, just mining and, and finding them naturally. Uh, another way is to x-ray a little bit. So I have two techniques on how to x-ray into your world. This first technique is for Java Edition players. Put a composter into the ground and then build a three tall pillar next to it. Next, get into the composter, put a lever on the top and turn it on, and then take a piston, crouch so that you don't accidentally turn off, so you don't turn off the lever, and then it will crush you into the composter. And you can see a little bit underground. It looks like uh, this wasn't a very great location. Um, sometimes Minecraft, and this is true on Java and on Bedrock Edition, sometimes Minecraft will basically hide uh, stuff below you until you kind of move around. So I'm gonna do the same technique, this time underground, and we're just gonna add the lever, we're gonna crouch, we're gonna stick the piston on there, there you go. So now, oh look, there's one right there. So I actually found one. Looks like it's not working super great, uh, but I can see like over there, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And so that's one technique to x-ray into the ground to try to find these things. The next technique is for bedrock players. We're here on the bedrock version of the game. And this one requires you to have dug down just a little bit. And if you have a mineshaft like thing where you have a walkway, like so, you can take a boat and you can set it down in the walkway. And you'll notice that the boat on one side of it is clipped into the wall. If you sit in this boat and then push your boat towards the way, the wall that it's clipped into, you can see through the wall just a little bit. Now this is very finicky, so if I go too far, it will black out my view. But if I can just back up here, there we go. So now I can see through the wall and hopefully you'll be able to spy an amethyst geode this way. And you can just kind of keep repeating this and you can also sort of like force it to, oh, <laughs> force it to go into the other side of the wall. Uh, boat, what are you What are you doing here? And so you can do this over and over again, there we go, uh, to try to spy different areas of your world and see if you can find any amethyst geodes. Once you have found a geode, all of the blocks that don't look like they're cracked, so these ones look like they're cracked, but there's ones that look kind of solid, they can all be picked up 
and you can just harvest those blocks. Unfortunately, these blocks don't turn back into amethyst shards, and the shards are obviously useful for tinted glass or spy glasses or what have you, but if you're just trying to build with these blocks, there you go, you have a whole bunch of these blocks. Now, what you probably wanna do is be able to harvest a whole bunch of these amethyst clusters. Whenever you break an amethyst cluster with your hand, it will drop two amethyst shards. If you break it with a pick, it'll drop at least four amethyst shards. And if you have fortune on your pick, it'll drop even more than that. So harvesting these amethyst clusters when they are fully grown, and they do grow over time. I have my random tick speed uh, set to really high so we can see these kind of growing in front of our eyes uh, They do take a while a very very long while But uh, once they're fully grown that's when they will drop the amethyst shards if you harvest them before they are fully grown in this state where it basically has two layers to the cluster then you won't get the amethyst shards so you do have to wait until they're completely fully grown to uh, harvest them so these clusters and uh, uh buds they are spawned from the cracked amethyst blocks that are that we see right here so if we are able to make even more of these cracks we can have more clusters grow so all we have to do is is unhide the other edges of this block because this block has all six sides. So if we break all of the blocks around those nodes, basically, then we will get more amethysts to generate. So as we can see, now that we've uncovered those blocks, we can get more of the amethyst clusters to generate on the top, bottom, sides, basically all of them. So if you come across an amethyst geode and want even more amethyst clusters, I would say the best option for you, uh, without building some crazy redstone contraption, which we're about ready to get to, is to just uncover all of these other blocks so that they can make crystals on all of the edges of the block. Oh, sorry, creeper, didn't mean to punch you. Um, now, if you run into a situation where you have two together or three together, uh, well then obviously don't break the one right next to it because your chances are you're gonna get more from having uh, the extra node there. So be aware and don't break any of the ones that have the cracks. By the way, if you try to, even with a silk touch pick or, or really any other method, piston, doesn't matter, they will just break and they won't come back. So you can't move them, you can't pick them up, you have to leave them where they are. But by uncovering them, you can get a lot more crystals. So basically, that's the meat of this technique, is once you find the amethyst geode, uncover those amethyst nodes so that lots and lots of crystals can spawn. But I showed you a redstone contraption at the beginning of this video, so let me show you how to make that. So here is the redstone creation that I made, and I, 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 the clock, who had designed this clock? I, the clock design is a, uh, interpretation of Mumbo Jumbo's clock design, but everything else in this design I made myself. Um, so here's how it works. We have a few issues with just setting up a observer connected to a piston that will break the amethyst cluster as it is being generated. And the issue is that Every time this block updates, uh, if the piston fired, it would just break the cluster before it was fully made. It this is actually the bud. So it would break the bud before it was a cluster, and we wouldn't get any amethyst shards back. So what we need to have is redstone, which can count an amount of observations before it sends off a piston to break the cluster. Now, there is a downside to using this method. First off, is it takes a really long time. I have the game uh, at a faster speed right now, and so even though this hasn't grown in a while, uh, it'd be even slower for you on a normal Minecraft survival world. So this is an incredibly slow technique. The other downside with this is that whenever the piston breaks off the cluster, it's only ever going to get two amethyst shards. So I've been doing this at a sped up game for a while and I've only gotten 16 shards from it. And so each time that that piston fires, you're only going to get two shards. So 
uh, it's going to be a very, very, very long time, a huge AFK session if you're trying to get any large number of these shards. The other downside is that this all has to be loaded in order to work. So unless you got really lucky with one of these being by your base, uh, you'd have to have this loaded in in order for the redstone to actually work. All of those aside, let's say you have a, uh, a amethyst geode next to your base and you want to build it, let me show you how. So here is a brand new cluster and I'm just going to take the uh, random tick speed and set it back down to normal here. And we're going to use this uh, node right here as the one uh, to, to harvest from. If you have another node, basically you just kind of need a node where you have one side and the other side free for you to be able to put your redstone stuff and you could make that happen by just breaking out all the other blocks if you wanted to but this is the side that we're going to work on i'm going to put down a block of iron currently just so uh, that's a temporary block next we are going to observe that iron then off of that observation i'm going to put down a block for a repeater to sit on that repeater is going to have a extra tick of delay so that's a two tick delay on that repeater that repeater is going to go into a block which will have a redstone torch then we're going to take some hoppers i'm going to put one temporarily down right there and these hoppers are going to go in a circle around the whole build uh, underneath that observer there and so they are all going to have to be connected so i'm going to put down one for temporary and i put down another one and see how the nozzle is pointing into that one that's what we want so we want every time we go around that the nozzle is pointing into the last hopper that we set down that way they will just basically go in a loop and there are 10 hoppers in total and that was that original one that i did so all the nozzles are going around in a big old circle now we're going to take some redstone dust and we're going to cover up these four hoppers uh, this hopper right here is powered on by the torch above it and then these four are powered by the dust which gives us five hoppers that are constantly powered when this block updates which i'll do right now you can see that it sends a pulse down the line when hoppers are powered with redstone they will not move any items inside of them so if i take this redstone dust and put it in this hopper and then i update this block over here boop and the clock runs, the dust moves to the next hopper in the line. That way we can count now up to five. So there will be five updates between the time that the redstone dust makes it all the way around. Where is it? Is it right there? So one more. It'll be right here, which is fantastic. So that's where we want it. So five times, then we want to set off the piston. So we can set the piston right here. All we have to do is power this piston. So I'm going to take a reading with a comparator off of this hopper. So that will now power the comparator. The comparator will go into this block and then we just need a redstone blob right there. And so what's going to happen is as that redstone dust moves through this clock, once it gets here, it's gonna update the comparator, which will push the piston. That'll be another update, which will, mean this clock will go off one more time and it will move this redstone into this hopper underneath the observer and the other hoppers don't have any redstone stopping them so it'll move the redstone along the line until it gets back to the beginning and that is just enough time for the piston to fire and retract and the block to break and all that stuff and so this clock will fire a few times while that's going off but the redstone is still on its way over here so it won't mess up the count so the redstone will be back at the beginning once it's all finished and we're basically done with this build all we need to do is capture the uh the the uh crystal as it is crushed so we're just going to put down a hopper right there so that it'll grab that crystal and then i'm going to put a block above and below it so that we will not lose anything to flying items whoops not there that's not what i meant to do Get out of there! Now my clock's all messed up. So if you mess it up, just grab your item out, put it back at the beginning, and set it in there. And that's the whole build. Uh, now that we're done with that, I'll just go ahead and set this random tick speed to really, really high. And we should see these grow a few times. And there we go. One time. So now the 
Redstone has moved to this first uh, location. Once it grows again, there we go. Second location. It grew a fourth time, so it'll be right here. And then, uh, there we go. It crushed it, and it moved the clock back to the original position, and we should have now two amethyst shards. So that is how you can make a redstone clock that will harvest those amethyst shards. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like, share it with your friends, Leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts and also subscribe for future videos. We're trying to cover everything in 1.17, the Caves and Cliffs Update Part 1. Until the next video, goodbye!